Goedemorgen, en welkom bij vandaag de Afrikaans eerste edition Mene Zalé. Good morning grade 12 and welcome to today's Afrikaans first additional language lesson. Aan die einde van die les sal jy die taalvraag uit die onderstaande vraag stel verstaan. And at the end of the lesson, you will be able to comprehend some of the language questions from the paper below. And this is the Graad 12 Afrikaans Eerste Additionele Taal Graad 1 from November 2017. Um, it's the November 2017 paper. And this is how the front cover looks of that exam paper when you receive it at the end of the year. I can for all aandag think on um, direct and indirect career for open. I'm going to pay a lot of attention to direct and indirect speech. And when I see a fraud it and alpha fraud stuff. And if you've been with me from the start, you will have seen that they are direct and indirect speech um, in nearly every single question paper. And that's why I decided just to recap all the direct and indirect reason um of indirect speech um rules. So we do weer advertentie, we've got another advertisement. And um, this say the tall frog is full, this is the advertentie under gebaseer, the number and the advertentie verwijs for the number of the frog that the answer to for can on obsessive fault in the advertentie be. So it says there that there can be mistakes. Um, and it's done on purpose, um, because then usually a language question is asked about it. So let's look at the whole advertentie. We have Swane, Iso, we have a beersie with a kruis here. We have three men that are sitting in a glimlach. We have again the Swane logo with three of the words here. Ons het hier die hardsteer geskikkie en ons het die wifi um, symbool en dan sê dit ek het een voelkie oor flight. Gratis wifi, maar net in Swane. Jammer, ek het jammer gesit. Een warm netwerk met gratis 500 megabyte data. Gratis toegang tot internet. Gratis gestel. Dit is vinnig as Gewone wifi, laai die gratis soep af vir naaste wifi internet um, zone. Ek wil net gauw van iets vir julle weis, want hulle het dit al in die vorige vraag sal gevraag. They have asked this in a previous paper. Hierdie soep is die Afrikaanse woord vir app. Ok, so a application in Afrikaans is dit a Toepassing, hy sê hierdie woord toep, is die Afrikaans vir app. Just that you know, if you come across it, because it is a strange word um, for some of you. Kom ons kyk nou na die vraag. Wat is die konnotatieve betekenis van? Ek het een voelkie oor vlijf. Nou onthou konnotatieve is die figuurlijke betekenis, the figurative meaning. Goed, en ek het die antwoord hieronder, goed, ek het iets op die nies gehoor, mens het my iets vertel. So, um, ek het dit volkie oor flight, I've just heard the news, or someone told me something. Waarna verwijs die in Swifi, ok, so dit verwijs na die woord Swane, want hou die woord verwijs beteken refer. Dan sê nummer 3.3, kies die correcte antwoord. En dan moet jy nou net die vraagnummer en die letter neerskryf. Met die vreemde spelling van jammer, nou ek het gesê, hy het drie erre, wil die adverteerde A aandui, dat waarvan al wat gratis is, B met die mense in Swane sympathiseer, C die ander inwoners van Zuid-Afrika stereotypeer, of B beklemt toon dat hierdie die vlak vir Swane is, en dit sal dan nou B wees, they want to emphasize that this service is only available 
to people in Swanee. That's why they typed it with three R. Now you've seen in nearly every one of the question papers that we've done, it's a lot of here and then Siva forum on his work with the Naki. Um, they've asked this. In all the papers we've done, I think you'll know that we are a runner. This is one word. I'm reminding you again this morning, it's one word. And then it's a lot of market in here. It's a nice and easy one this time. Feel warm. Then we get by water in the water in the upper tank. It's like the friend here under on. So the question is asking you go back to the advertisement and look for the one word that you find in the advertisement that links to this picture. Now remember this is a free service and if something is free then it is gratis. Now, what I did for Scroll and it's all Scroll style, is in the Sabbatike, if you Scroll here, the synonym for gratis. Give the synonym for free gratis, and the synonym is for niet. <coughs> so add that to your vocab, gratis, and for niet betekent precies hetzelfde. It means exactly the same. Now, it's said it's eat the correct word, I did the synopsis. Weer jy en skryf jy net jou spraaknummer en die antwoord dienen. Gratis gesel is een voorbeeld van assinantie of alliteratie. Onthou, dit is die herhaling van die consonante. It's the repetition of the consonant. Daarom is dit alliteratie. 3.7 vraag, gee die correcte vorm van die bijvoeglijke naamwoord tussen hakkie. So bijvoeglijke naamwoord is een adjective. Nou, kijk, ek het in ons ook een stikkie gesit met groot woord. Look at the sentence to determine what you have to do. Dit is vinnig as gewone wifi. So let's look eindelijk jou trappe van vergelijking. They are actually asking your degrees of comparison. And remember, if you are busy with the group two degree of comparison, then you are, well, you have the word us after the adjective. So this is, finnachet, I add the er because I'm busy with the second group of um, the degrees of comparison. On the last install, this word we could do, and the last time we did language, we did focus on what a lit word is. And now know this is D in a. Only those two. It's your article. It can only be those two. So now what the impact for? Which one do I have to fill in? Or B is the Sinniki. Laai die gratis toep af per naaste Swifi internet soene. Now you remember, I say, if you are busy with the degrees of comparison and you have the last group, the third group, the biggest one, the word press in the trap, then you can put the word D in front of it. I still use the example of mooi. Mooi, mooie, die mooiste. So now we've got naaste, got the ste, so then I have to put die in there. Dan vraag hulle, hoe kan een mens aan die drie maand se lifestyle sien, dat hulle die twaai paai geniet? Ek het nou maar net gesê die maand klimlag. You could have said die maand is op hulle voene. Okay, because that would perfect, that would also be absolutely fine because they are on their um, cell phones in the picture, which implies that they are enjoying the Wi-Fi. Kies die correcte woord uit die systematie. Die logo, so ek het om hier ingesit, streef altijd woord, van Swanee symboliseer dat die stad altijd beter wil doen of Wi-Fi het. Now they wanted you to look at the one which three of alphabet word, and that then tells us 
dat hulle altyd beter wil doen. They want to improve themselves. Ok, so onthou nou, ons het nou gesien, in elk een van die advertenties het hulle gevra vir een lidvoer, hulle het gevra vir trappe van vergelijking, en hulle het gevra vir intensieve vorme. By doing these various cases in preparation for your exam, you start picking up a pattern. So you see intensive forum has been asked. Um, degrees of comparison articles have been asked. So it's the same type of question. You just don't know what example you are going to get. Good. Now to say die strookie strength, and weer een, sê hulle die vraag wat volg is op die strookie strength gebaseer, en jy moet die instructies uitgeef. So, kom ons kyk nou net na die strookie strength. Remember, it's all about what you see in the cartoon. So, jy het ons een ma, kyk sy is daar, bees as ek klik met een vinger op haar schoot rekenaar, en sy sê, my baas het my gevra, of ek die bezigheid te vijf toe plas sy sal aan vier. En daar sê haar dokter, en die dokter sê, koe, en kyk, jy sê die vaai, wat ons uitkak, en kyk die maaglim lak, Het sê, en die Twitter, en Instagram in die skrywing. Hier is muziek note, die goede muziek note. Kijk, daar speel seker muziek die wiste. Kijk, die maaglimlag nog speel, sy is besig om die rekenaar te klik, en die dokter kies sê, shoot ma, jy in sociale media, ek is beindruk. Kijk, hoe die maas en mond hier verander is. Look at how her mouth has changed. Click, there's a question mark now. Oh, I fit. Something might have gone wrong. Look at the girl. She's looking at the mother. Slurp. Okay, so obviously she's drinking a cool drink. Mom there. Click. Two question marks. Look at the mom's face now. Actually, you know, it's the doll. So obviously the mom is not coming right with the various social media accounts. Kijk daar so, like the doctor key, she looks smug. Um, so, and then the booty, hi, say, en jy van die assistent nodig het. The brother says, and you will need an assistant, because if mom is paying the daughter to manage these accounts, he wants to get some money out of the deal as well. Okay, so there's a long quickie swan on the Skype in die strookie spring. Now, there's a lot of little things that we have to have a look at. Okay, so kom ons kijk, 4.1. Voltooi die sin met die correcte selfstandige naamboot. Die selfstandige naamboot is een naam, so die ma is besig om met een vinger op haar skoot rekenaar te waar. If you just wrote rekenaar, you will get the mark as well. Ok, ek het nou maar net skootrekenaar daar gesit, because it is a laptop, but a laptop is a skootrekenaar, however, at the end of the year, if you only got to the word rekenaar, you will get the mark. Gee een voorbeeld van klank na boodsing in die skootie sê. So, Anna Matatea, goed, en dit is, klik, of slurp, that slurp would also have given you the mark. I get a beautiful tip. Now, let's say number three. Waarheid kan ons afleid dat die ma en haar dochter moendlik in die kombuis sit. And if we look at, I've just taken phone one, how can we derive that they're sitting in the kitchen? So, I get to say, daar is the ijska in die vreemd. Let's say you didn't know that a fridge is a ice cup. If you wrote, there is a D5 in the Frenkie, you would have also gotten the mark. Okay, so probeer in a manier, denk hoe jy jy by jou antwoord kan uitkom, as jy woordes kan, bykie ontbreek. Try and find a way to give an answer, even though you don't always have the vocab. Um, to write it, because you might just get um, the mark. Here a better Afrikaans word for the slang word cool in the realm of the year. 
Afrikaanse Afrikaans is ook echt minder cool, maar dit is nou nie eindelijk rechte Afrikaans nie, dit is eindelijk klein, so jy kom maar gesê, mooi, mooi so, goed, as jy cool so gespel het, dan was dit ook recht, onthou as dit lief met die uitroepteken. Just remember, the exclamation mark, dan nummer 5, wat is die funksie van die muziekmoorde in rondie 2, the function of the music note in frame 2, the die aan dat die muziek gespeel word, of the die aan dat muziek speel, en Salma lekker, en denk ek sy ook gewerk het, dit is ook vir my een aanvaardbare antwoord vir 4.4, En ja, definitief. Ek het nou nie al die opties meer geskryf nie, saam maar ek denk dat al die options wat definitief jy ook het een maak vir lekker. Ok, Kyle, did we say that she is humming? Ja, jy kan sê, maar nou moet jy dit in Afrikaans kan sê, jy heeft jy bij wat te sê in Afrikaans, so sy Mjuri. Humming is Mjuri. N-E-U-R-I-E Maar as jy sê sê, sy sing vir haar sjaal, ok, she singing to herself, I'm pretty sure you would have gotten that mark as well. A good way of interpreting that frame, Kel, well done. Goed, dan, vraag nummer 6, hoe kan jy in een raampie 4 sien, dat die maal onzeker is, oor wat sy moet doen? So remember, I said it's all about what you can see. So how can you see? that this mom is unsure about herself, onzeker. So daar is een vraagteken, en ons sien hem daar, die maat stuit haar lippe, so sy doen lip, en sy tik met een vinger, she's tighting with one finger. Ek denk, die vraagteken, en dat sy tik met een vinger, was die makkelijkste om meer te skryf, as a answer. The fact that there's a question mark and she's typing with one finger is most probably the easiest way to express that you can see that she's unsure about what she's doing. Okay, now see this. Skryf die sin by die maan rond die spuif by die dokter vraag in die direkte rede. Die maan vraag vir haar dokter of sy dit nie vir haar wil doen. Remember I said, we identify our birth wil doen. We identify all our pronouns, ons is sy en haar, and then we have to determine if it's a question or a statement they ask me. This one is a question starting with a verb because we've got off. So if we have to rewrite this, this is what's going to happen. The ma vraag vir die dokter, then we put our colon, like they told us to. We put our inverted comma. Vol, which is our verb one, is going to move to the front. Um, Seth, you said, kan jy? Um, I would urge you not to change your auxiliary verb from will to can. Depending on who's marking, they can be extremely strict. And because you've now changed will to can, they might not give you the mark. So, in essence, you are still right because you've now put can ye dit ni fer my duni. But... To make sure that you do get the mark, stick to the auxiliary verb they have given you. Just for safety's sake, because you're actually not wrong, but um, sometimes some of the markers are very strict. They want the words to be exactly like you've got them in the language paper. So, will make the work letter. Jij dit nie vir my duni? Question mark. Close the inverted comma. Please remember the inverted comma must never be over the punctuation mark. It's always the punctuation mark, then the inverted commas. Now, I have made, I've shared with you my notes and that I give to my kids on direct and indirect speech and they my handwritten notes. So, I guess, Yamad, I hope you can all um, read what I've written here. But these are the ones 
that I do in part of my kits. Um, I usually do handwritten summaries. I scan them in and then I reflect them on the board. Um, I wasn't able to do PowerPoint up until I started the e-school. So this is why I'm used to this. Okay, so go on state text. Oh, okay, so here's your case of style spinner, our statement sentences. Now there's a few things you have to remember. With direct and indirect speech, they are actually checking your group three conjunction. Kalam vult weet dat jy weet dat jy sinne met dat verbind. Your statement, you join with dat, dat is a group three conjunction, so you have to remember your verb has to move to the end of the sentence. Now, Yifro, this was a situation in my class, so I always use tips from my class as examples, so the Yifro is actually me. Michael was one of the pupils in my matric class last year. So, Jeffro says that it's Michael. So, Jeffro is now a Frauke, a female, and the act in the May in the direct speech gedeelte verwijs na haar. Michael is now a Sian, he's a boy, so everything that jy and jou will refer to him. Okay, so I say we underline our verb, moet in verb, and we circle our pronouns that we remember that we have to change them. In Danet, I think it's a muni di tense can be sin for under me. Okay, remember I said you do not change the tense in Afrikaans sentences. There's one exception, which I'll explain later on, but you don't do it. So now we write down that sentence as is. Jeffre says to Michael, I sit my dad. I've now put the number three on top because it's to remind me that my verb has to move to the end. Dad, I, harder in the class, moot verb. If you've got your auxiliary verbs, sal, will, can, and moot, they move to the end, but in front of your verb too. Okay. Almost like it's not a full for this Niki. Let's look at the next sentence. Okay, now it's also again, Michael answered for Jeffra. So Michael is now first, so all the ak and may is referring to Michael. Jeffra is second, so all the yay and yo is referring to the female. Once again, I look for my verb, I get make home. I look for my pronoun. Act, remember to look for your pronoun in your infinitive as well. So I get so. And I always urge my children to put brackets around the infinitive because remember if your verb moves to the end, it will always move in front of the infinitive. So come on, Skype. I write down this exactly as it's been given to me. Michael answered for Jeffra. Because it is still a statement, I put that. I put a number three on top to remind me it's group three. My verb has to move to the end. Now, step by step. I need all from how my verb has moved to the end. Front of the infinite, um in our class the verb. Please remember to look for the pronoun in the infinite because um, I found that you guys remember to change everything, but you always forget when I'm marking to change the pronoun stuck in the infinite, and then you've gotten everything right, and then you lose that mark. And like I said in a previous lesson, the biggest mistake that we come across with direct and indirect speech is the fact that um, you either forget to move the verb or you forget to change the pronoun. So the whole process of doing it step by step um, will um, help. And Yifro can... Um, no, Yifra can, Bob, Yifra can only be a female. If, if it's Meneer, then it will be a man. Okay, so Yifra is a female teacher. Onderwijzer 
can be male or female. Okay, so on that vice can be male or female. Jefrau is always female and the near is always male. Jefrau is, um, don't confuse Jefrau with Mefrau. Okay, Jefrau means man and the near means sir um, in a classroom situation. Okay, Mefrau just means Mrs. My Jefrau is definitely just referring to a female teacher. Okay. Kom ons gaan aan. Now I've done the class. So the class is referring to more than one. There's lots of boys and girls sitting in the class. So whatever is on, it's referring to that. The class says, on heet me on huisberg gedoenie. So tot ons kinders. Okay. So I look for my um, pronoun and I look for my verb. Now I rewrite it. This stays the same. The class say that, remember that is a group three conjunction. Hele, me, hele, huisbar, te doen, het, me. If you've got a head, remember the head and the word moves right to the end. It moves after verb two. It's only sal, vol, kan, and moot that move to the end, but in front of verb two. It will move after verb two. Also remember that your second negative will always come last. You'll see in my various sentences that I've done, I've tried to think of um, things that you guys sometimes get wrong. Okay, dan het ek gesê, jyfrou sê, jylle moet hard vir die examen leer. Nou, jylle is also your um, plural, like on. Okay, I've looked at my, um, I've identified my verb. So, ek skryf hier die precies so neer. I write it down exactly like that. Jyfrou sê, dat, dat is a group 3 conjunction. Hylle, Hard for the examen, moet leer. Okay, just as a reminder, head goes after verb two, moot in front of the verb two. Okay. And then ons and yella in the direct speech always change to hella. They don't change to anything else. Okay, now just by frachten. Now we have question words. Meisen frachten je vrouw. Kan ek my toebroetie in jou plaas eet? Ok, so ek het kan en eet. Ek het ook ek, my jou. I've put a lot of things in here. Nou het ek gesê. As jy vraag vind, met a werkwoord begin. Gebruik of om die twee sinne te verbind. If your question starts with a verb, you use of to join the two sentences. So we write the sentence, introductory sentence as is. Meisten vragen je vrouw of hij, zij, te broeien in haar klas kan je. Once again, auxiliary verb, so it moves in front of verb two. Okay, so of hij. In our class, can it? Of is also a group three conjunction. Okay. Another one, another example of a question. Jefra Frau Meisten, what does jij? Now, our question is starting with a question word, not a verb. So, as you vraag sin, met a vraag word begin, word die vraag word gebruik om die twee sinne te verbind. So, if your question is starting with a question word, then that question word is used to join the two sentences. Because remember, your question words are also group three conjunctions. Okay, they also fall under group three conjunctions. So once again, I've identified my verb, I've identified my pronoun, 
Ihre Jungfrau, Frau Vermeister, war ein Ding und dann ein full stop. Not a question mark. I forgot to mention it in a, the previous example. You put a full stop because now it's just two sentences joined together. Okay, please remember you don't put a question at the end, that's a full stop. Okay, so if my question starts with a verb, I use of to join the two sentences. If my question starts with a question word, then I use the question word as the joining conjunction. Okay, now that's the foul sentence. There's two ways um, that you can attempt writing instructions into um, indirect in speech. I, I doubt that they will ask you a befalsen at the end of the year. Um, I've never actually come across a befalsen at the end of the year, but it is important to know how to do it in case you might come across it in an exam. So, Anna says to Callum, here's a my book. Okay, so she says, give me your book. It's an instruction. So Anna say, okay, once again, I've identified my verb and I have identified my pronoun. Now, the first option is where you add a subject and you must remember that you have to have um, duck and mut. Okay, so let's just have a look. I write down sentence. As is, Anna says a callum. Step one, you put da. Step two, now we go on our You have to add a subject. Because it's an instruction, the um, subject has fallen away. She's giving callum an instruction, so it becomes that I fell or say book. Now, because it's an instruction, I need to remember to add mut, mut here. So this is a little bit more complex. Um, so sub yin, put that to join the two sentences. Sub suya, we remember to add our subject. Sub three, um, I need to remember to change the given pronoun in sub speed. You add root and you move it to the end in front of verb two. Okay, this one is the one option of doing the falsana. The next one is a little bit easier. Okay. Now I said all. Oh, this is option two. All plus fifth. This is the easier option I personally think when given an instruction um, to write into indirect speech. Anna says a callum, here for my book, I've used exactly the same thing. Now, what do I do? Anna says a callum, now I use um, my infinitive word, to join the two sentences. Um, or here. This is the easier option to do it. Okay, so you might have been taught the way that I've shown you in option one, or you might have been taught the way that I've shown you in option two. Personally, if you get asked to write a sentence into the indirect speech and they haven't guided you how to do it, I will definitely go for option two because. I remember my own, I change my pronoun, I move my verb to the end, but I just have to remember to put the t in front of verb two. So, Anna says the callum um peral shai the here. But, like I said, I've gone through the befal sinner. However, I am pretty sure you will, you'll even see in the past papers that we've done that um, you have just gotten questions and statements to put into the indirect speech. I have just done this because you need to be thorough and you never know what can be asked at the end of the year. Okay, done, I think you saw. Um, oh, this was a negative sentence, um, just that you could see. Damien says to Callum, 
Muni your book for Anafiani. Muni, remember, sit up, look me. So this was the first option, like I explained it. Damien says a callum that I me say book for Anna would hear me. Okay, so I have to remember to add my subject, my honor bad, and my would move to the end. Or option two, Damien says a callum um me say book for Anna to hear me. The mood will fall away because this is an infinitive. And in an infinitive sentence, you can never have an auxiliary verb. Okay, but don't fret too much about this. Um, it's not something um, to stress about. Kom ons kyk saade. Nou is ek gevraag, wanneer word die tens van a sin verander? When do we change the tense of a sentence in the indirect speech in Afrikaans? Sila, wanneer die inleidende sin in verlede tyd is. You will only change the tense of a sentence if that introductory sentence is in the past tense. And now with your now your Bible can take and plug for what for under. You then have to remember that your adverb of time and place will also change. So you fry for Greek has said, Yai mut van da harder var. So now my introductory sentence. Is in the past tense. Okay, so this now tells me I have to change the tense. You never ever change the tense unless this is in the past tense. And you have to think to yourself, okay, the sentence, when this is in the past tense, this sentence on this part also has to be in the past tense. They have to balance. Okay, so come on, Skype. It's a normal statement. I've got my pronoun. I get my word. You know, hier is ek my adverb of time, my byword van tyd. Jyfra het vir Greg gesê, dat, group 3, hy daar die dag harder moes ver. Ok, I've also not actually seen them ask in past papers the um, changing of the tense, but now we've done it. Ok, so that's group 3, I've changed my... Um, Pronoun, I've changed my adverb of time, and now remember to put this in the past tense because my introductory sentence was in the past. Okay, you Jason it for your prophecy. I bring from open my clear pen of class to. Okay, so here in the clear side, Dora must also change for under. I write very neat to near. I write this down exactly like it is. Jason heeft die juffrouw gesê dat hy daar die ochtend sy kleerpenne klas toe gebring het. Okay, in the past tense, I've got a head, so my verb has to go right to the end. Okay, and then just quickly, from indirect to direct speech, I see we've got that a few times. Um, Greg sê vir juffrouw dat sy sy kindling juffrouw is. Okay, so now there's a few things that I need to remember. I write down this section as is. Greg says the Yifro. Now it's that. Und die double pin in Arnolding second. Remember the colon and quotation mark. Stop three. The dot fall back. This dot falls away. Stop three. Your subject. Okay, you need to remember it has to be written with a capital letter. Yay. Stop C, your verb. Remember, verb in the second position. So you have to move it back. Jy is, the text says, stop five, the rest van die sin, and how the voornaam word te verander. You've got the rest of your sentence that you write down. Remember to change your pronoun. My sin sin in juffrouw. And then, last sin. Success on how the punctuality and last the honor and second. Remember the punctuation and the last um, the last quotation mark. Um, please don't put them on top of one another. Make very clear that the marker can see full stop and then next to it the inverted commas. If it looks like they are 
this quotation mark is hovering above the full stop, you will not get the mark. Okay, so it, it is full stop and then you close your inverted commas. Okay, that was what I was looking for. Okay, so let's quickly recap. You remember to put the colon, inverted comma, you start with your um, subject, capital letter, you bring your verb back to the second position, you remember to change the pronoun, full stop or question mark, close the inverted comma, because this they have asked as well in some of these past papers. Okay, and then the last two questions. Um, the humor van die stroopie streng vir my rampie sets na voere. The humor in the cartoon we find in um, we find in this frame 6. Wat er waarheid ontdek die leeser omtrent die ma in rampie sê? What do we, what is the truth waarheid that we um, sige aas in rampie sê? Die ma weet nie baie van die weke naas nie. The mom doesn't know a lot about computers, or the mom weet nie baie van sociale netwerke af. The mom doesn't know a lot about social media. That would also get you the um, mark. Hoe kom dink jy wil die boetie graag die sissies as consent heet? Why does the um, little brother want to be the little girl's assistant? Hy wil ook geld maak. He also wants to make money. En dan, um, kies die correcte antwoord, die glimlach op die meisjes te gesig in raamkie 6, weis hoe die vrede ontstelt harte verbaas sy is. Now remember, as you have to try and eliminate this, harte is fair, this is die nacht, ontstelt means upset, verbaas is shocked, if someone is verbaas, the eyes will be wide open, so she is the vrede. So that is satisfied. Okay, so this is now the stroke screen. Um, I can then ask you, you must be real for the director and the director here again. Now, guys, this has been my last lesson um, with you. I hope you found my lesson worthwhile. From Monday, you will have a new teacher. And um, I've given it some thought, and um, I thought to myself that maybe I'm going to share my email address with you guys that if you want to um, send me an email, maybe you have written an essay and you can't get hold of your teacher and you'd like some feedback, I will gladly mark the essay for you and um, give you some feedback on how to um, improve your um, essay writing. And um, also, if you stuck with some language that you're not sure about, or maybe some poetry, um, you are more than welcome um, to email me. I really won't mind. Um, I've now typed here. Let me just check. Okay. So I've typed my email address. I'm just not sure if you can all see it. I've tried to post it on the group chat. Um, but it's tfunbake at northcliffhigh.co.za. You are really more than welcome to um, message me or send me your essay once you've written on a good and a, or a bad experience, and I will gladly help. It has been lovely teaching you guys. Um, those that communicated with me, I um, appreciate it as well. Um, it has been a pleasure. I get work by a career. Um, I also learned a lot. Please, guys, don't be shy to email me. I give my email address to all my kids at school, and they are constantly emailing me their essays to check before an exam, or emailing me their teachers to check if it's okay before they deliver the teacher. If you need any other assistance, language related, if you do feel like for kids um, and you need assistance, you can contact me. Even if you do the short story, because I've done a workshop on short stories with some other schools as well, you're also welcome um, to email me. Please keep on attending the lesson, right? Um, please um, don't stop. Um, let me just try. I think I'm talking in this case. Um, please don't um, 
stop attending the lesson. I can let Rafa hear it yet, sir. Um, Sonia, I'm actually sending it again. Just give me a moment. I'm a bit slow trying to do more than one thing. Um, Sonia, did you get it? Just let me know. Actually, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to try my class to buy it for me. I can also tell you that I'm going to start with a good for the examen. Good luck for the preparations. You can all do it. In the end, you are going to be great. I know it. I know it about my matrix. Um, and I say, always remember, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you see, and smarter than you think. I'm going to miss these lessons. Um, please keep attending and follow us on the various social media lessons. Um, I'm going to miss you, Kale, as well. You always chatted to me and you always said thank you. Um, Bob, Carl, Seth, um, Sonia, it's the first time I've seen you here on the group chat. Tilma, we've chatted quite a bit on the group chat as well. Keep safe, keep healthy, and all the best for your preparation at the end of the year. Bye, guys.